It's been a great day, hasn't it? It's been brilliant. Um, I'm going to give all my notes away, by the way, because um, I work in, en in education, but I also work in, in commerce, and we have a real problem at the moment. People coming out of education, those people are incredibly well educated, but totally incompetent. <laughs> a anyone know someone who's got really high-level qualifications but the interpersonal skills of a brick? <laughs> Don't point, that's, that's rude. Um, <laughs> it, I would like to dedicate this presentation to the City of Leeds because the City of Leeds at the moment are doing something extraordinary. They've put aside, or they're trying to put aside their political differences and say, what would we do if every decision we made in Leeds actually valued the child? This is quite extraordinary. I'm working with them at the moment. Then we're using creative means in order to get teachers and the leaders of Leeds to, to look at the four elements of humanity, which is what Michael Gove, George Osborne, Hamlet and the Buddha have in common. But in Hamlet's speech, he explores this. And what I'd like to do is explore that speech with you today. Um, Daisaku Akeda, who is the leader of a, a, a Buddhist lay organization uh, for the creation of value, says this. Education deals with the essence of what it is to be human. No undertaking is more valuable and more sacred. And unfortunately, in our education systems, not just in the UK, but in the West, we have focused too much upon statistics and not enough upon the whole child. And this is as damaging to those children who are gifted and talented as those who feel just outside the margins of education. I could give you data at the moment, but actually I'd like to look at your own personal experience. How many people here, and feel free to put your hands up, who know someone, have always worked hard at school, done their best, did the study, got the grades, and then in their late teens and early 20s, they just fall off the edge emotionally. They drop out of university. Put your hands up if you know someone like this. Who actually, and that is a huge number. We have to get away from the idea that a qualification means happiness. It doesn't, but an education should. So, what I'd like to do, it's called the butterfly model. It's only taken me about 30 years to get a complexity system uh, broken down to this. This is it. I work with foundation stage children. And if you can't put uh, the emergent double helix model of adult biopsychosocial systems in front of them and for them to get it. However, you can put two big circles and say all life is, at any moment, is me, it's everybody else, and it's what we're creating. Um, so I would like to explore this with someone, but I, I needed to find someone who is open. So what I did over the past 24 hours, I tweeted someone, if anyone's been following my tweet, saying, I'm looking for someone to come and deliver TED with me. And someone has chosen to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, we can give a big hand of, uh, round of applause so Godfrey is going to come and perform Hamlet. Come on, Godfrey. Here we go. Come on. Come here. <laughs> we only met today. I am in love. Sit down. Uh, now, Godfrey, I said, Godfrey, this is what I would like you to do. I'd like you to perform Hamlet. And he said, um, OK. <laughs> what I have to do. Now, what I think um, is important is, although the TED Talks are quite inspirational, what's important is what do we do with that? And I've been moved, generally, by the, the, what I've heard today. But actually, I'd like to show you what we're doing in schools to help children maintain that or original creativity and passion for learning. So, Godfrey and I are going to work through Hamlet's speech. Now, the, sil the soliloquy we're looking at is a to be or not to be. Because in that soliloquy, um, Shakespeare nails it. There are four things that we have in common. In, in Rumor Garden, a house with four rooms, he said, there's an Indian proverb or axiom that says that everyone is a house with four rooms. A physical, a mental, an emotional, and a spiritual. Most of us tend to live in one room most of the time. But unless we go into every room every day, even only to keep it aired, we are not a complete person. And a classroom should be like that. Every lesson, you should be reconnecting with what children already have. For those of you who have seen Ken Robinson's TED Talk, he talks about divergent thinking. This is how to maintain diger divergent thinking in children. So, what we're going to do, we're going to break, <laughs> break the speech. Look at the terror on this man. <laughs> um, we're going to break the speech down to four points, and we are going to deliver this yep. together. Okay? So, okay. The, first, the first element in Hamlet's speech is the first human need. He says, we all have this need. So, cool. to be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is noble in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, 
or to take against a sea of troubles and by opposing endo to die to sleep no more and by asleep to say we end a headache and the thousand natural shocks that a flesh is heir to tis a consummation devoutly to be wished to die to sleep grab a seat cool <laughs> <laughs> so in that in that we all have this need to question yeah, to be or not to be, that is a question. Whether it is noble in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows, how many of us maintain our nobility? We don't want to upset people. We don't want, we just, you know, don't be nasty. We keep that question to ourselves, don't we? And actually, is it about being nice or saying the right thing? And this, for those ed educators in the room, is Ofsted's four elements of framework. This is leadership and management. Because in schools, we need the leaders to ask the right question and make the right demands. So that is our first need. But if we do not honour this need, we are not a complete person. So when you leave here today, who are you going to ask the question to? To yourself? To someone else? But the question needs to be asked. Let's have a look at the second need. Okay, so. Um, to sleep, perchance, to, to dream, I. There's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of a so long a life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong. Now, the oppressor's wrong. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> the oppressor is wrong. Yeah. The oppressor's wrong. Who knows someone who has power but use it to oppress someone else? These are the things that just, I can't say the word, off every day. <laughs> We're being filmed. There are children watching this. And that is what... Hamlet says, we try every day to do things, but someone there, it's there, another word for this person is a bully. At work and in schools, and I see a lot of this in schools, and I'm not talking in the classroom, I'm talking in the staff room. Bullies who try to get teachers to do things that teachers really do not want to do. So the oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely. Now, the proud man's contumely is someone who's just contemptible. You're not of my group, my race, my, my gender, my class, therefore I am contemptible to you. The other people that upset us are... The pangs of despised love. The pangs of despised is about love. It's having your heart broken. It's also not connecting with that person when you walk down the road. That little moment of non-connection. The laws delay the insolence of office, Mr. Gove. <laughs> the <laughs> insolence of office. When you get some of the top academics in the world write you a letter and say, maybe you're getting it wrong, you don't just not reply. <laughs> it's just not good. Just because you've got a label doesn't actually automatically give you insight. It just gives you an office. And we have to have people who have the compassion in their roles and not just an ego the size of a house. So, so cool. Yeah. The, and the spurns that patient merits of an unworthy taste. The spurs of patient merit of the unworthy taste, the people who should know better. People who just complain about lots of things. Oh, come on, guys, there are more important things. I'm not sure if anyone's ever been in, the, in a school staff room when someone uses somebody else's mug. <laughs> Come on, there are bigger points. And <laughs> when he himself might his creatus make with a bare bodkin. Now, a creatus in Shakespeare's time yep. is that thing you write on a bill to say paid in full. Paid in full. And a bare bodkin is a small dagger. Although Hamlet is considering suicide, what he's actually saying is, I could have a different life. I want to pay the bill. Anybody here just want to pay the bill and go home? So, this is our need for resilience. And this single figure is the one thing we're putting up in classrooms because this is the things we have ch children don't have and i'll come to this at the end so the third part the undiscovered country yeah so who would these photos bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life but that the dreads of something after death that undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns puzzles the wheel and makes us rather bear those ills we have then fly to others we know not of. I know. What's it all about? Grab a seat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fardels in Shakespeare's time is a burden. It's, it's actually wood you carry. Why do we do this? Why do we do this? Why do we just get up in the morning and do the same stuff? Because we lack the confidence, the belief for that undiscovered country. Now, again, Hamlet's considering death, but what he refers to here in Shakespeare is the life we could have and the relationships we could have the relationships with ourselves and the relationships with others. And the third, so the third thing is, is relationships. Uh, in Ofsted, this is behaviour and safety. <laughs> oh, the early one in Ofsted was teaching and learning. And all the schools that use this are good to outstanding. 
for a very simple reason. Instead of us putting a heart on Hamlet, we put it on a piece of paper and write it in big letters, and then someone on that side of OCD can see that it fits Ofsted. But actually, the children don't get that. The children get this. The children get the play, because the play's the thing. And finally, enterprise of great pith and moment. Thus, conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus, the native hue of resolution is cyclid o'er with a pale cast of thought. And enterprises of great pitch and moment, with disregards, the currents turn away. And lose the name of action. This is a native hue. Ted colour is the native hue. It's red. It's that moment where you go, I'm just going to do it. And what's going to happen when we leave this auditorium with all that passion in our hearts, we're going to meet someone and they say, what did you do? He said, I went to this great day and it was fantastic and I met these wonderful people and they're going to say, oh, you'll get over yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm like, what? And then you go, well, maybe, maybe they weren't that good. Maybe, you know, it was all right, it was fine. And the pale cast of thought is when we overthink, when we start thinking about what would happen if, what would happen if, and now the passion of red becomes the insipid colour of inaction. And this is our fourth need. We need to see that there is uh, the results of our endeavours. We need to see results. We need to see results. And this gives us the four qualities of the Buddha. Now, please, for all various faiths out there, any religious leader will have these four, because it's just what makes us human. If we created an education system where we could really question, rather than some teachers feeling terrified to put forward an idea that maybe we should get the kids to do all the learning at home because they've got the technology to do that when we do the homework in class. How's that sound? It's called flip learning. Go and have a search for it. More and more schools are getting the kids to use the technology they've got in their back pocket to do all the study so the slow learners can read it and re review it, review it, review it before they come in the class. But some teachers won't do it because that's not how they teach. And my battle in education is, it is not how you teach, it's how the children <coughs> learn. So, questions develop courage, but we need to have the courage to ask the, que ask the questions, even if they're, they're going to be attacked. Resilience develops life force, which is the second quality of the Buddha. What I think you may have experienced during the course of the day is tangible energy from people who are impassioned about something. This is extraordinary. And this is what happens in organisations, both educational organisations and business organisations, where change is allowed to flourish. Energy breeds energy, because that's what life does. The third one is if we do develop relationships, we have great relationships to compassion. It's all the things that the other speakers have been saying. We actually have heart-to-heart -heart connection with others. We do not have another professional in front of us, we have another person. And finally, Results lead to wisdom. Wouldn't it be great if children left school wanting to know more? And if people left, left school and then said, I will never have to do that subject ever again. <laughs> that is not an education. That is, that, is, that is dangerous because you have people who think that they can't. And education is about showing that you can. So, this is what it looks like in a classroom. It's a very simple line and this represents a lot of what's already been talked about by other speakers. The earlier speaker, Silla, was talking about raising consciousness, taking the children consciously from here, through this journey, to here. From here, this is, uh, for the psychologists in the room, this is unconscious incompetence. I do not know what I need to know. And then someone says, by the way, you could, you could get to here. And then we have this moment of thinking, oh my God. How am I going to do that? Now, the clever kids go, oh, well, I just do what I did before, and they're given a bridge. Yeah? The rest of us go, oh, I'm not sure about this. And we have this second moment, which is we are consciously incompetent. We know what we don't know. And then we have to go through this learning journey, and it's conscious competence. It's going, I really don't get it. I might feel really lost here, but if I continue, I have breakthrough insights. And that moves us into conscious competence. And then eventually, it becomes unconscious competence. The danger is here, for those children that have this little bridge, they end up thinking that they're just cleverer than everybody else. And neurologically, they have something, according to Dr. Andrew Curran, please read his book, The Little Book of Big Stuff About the Brain, 
they have been educated to have learned autistic trait. Their creativity has actually been deprogrammed out of their brain neurologically because they never really needed it. What do we need in terms of our innovation in businesses now? It's about creativity, it's about collaboration, it's not someone who knows the answer. Because if you know the answer, it's not enough because we now have got Google. <laughs> I would recommend to you uh, Ian Gilbert's marvellous book <laughs> called Why Do I Need a Teacher When I've Got Google? <laughs> and uh, it's a great book and his message is actually we do need teachers. We need teachers who will inspire us, who will motivate us, who will move us to be able to go from here to here. This is a class and I have hundreds of classrooms around the UK and, and abroad now using this simple model and this teacher is outstanding practice um, the children, during the course of the lesson, they're all starting here, but during the course of the lesson, they can get up and move their photograph to where they are on their learning journey. The teacher doesn't have to walk around and ask them, they're just doing it. Doesn't that just make sense? It's dead easy. Oh, by the way, I don't have a book for this. I have seven principles and I give permission. But there is no handbook. There are some key principles and they just happen to be the principles of humanity that we've always had and hopefully we'll all have. So I'd like to finish with this quote from the most defiled woman in Hamlet and possibly the whole of Shakespeare. Ophelia, Ophelia when she says, Lord, we know not we are. We know what we are, but not what we might be. And I think the message that we've had today is we do not even know our own potential. And the reason why I got Godfrey to help me out is I couldn't do this on my own. I could just give you a theory or I could say I want some help from someone because I firmly believe if you ask with the right intention, the right person will turn up and they will be a Buddha and they will look like this. <laughs> 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 the, the, Buddha said, the Buddha said, if you know but you do not do, you do not know. And we have too many children being damaged by an education system because people know what to do, but they lack the compassion to do it. Thank you very much.